Hello fellow felters and welcome to my channel. Today as part of the needle felting essentials we are going to be talking about mats, needles and tools. Just a couple of things just to give you a little bit extra information about what's out there um, and what the needles mean and what sort of tools you can get to make your life a bit easier. So first off we're going to start with mats and I'm going to start off with this. This is the all round basic probably what you're going to get in a starter kit. Um, it's a piece of polystyrene and it's fantastic. Um, you can literally buy them for a pound in most craft shops if you want to just buy them on their own. This one is really quite small but as a starter kit it's absolutely fine. Um, it's great, it lasts a while but soon it starts to sort of go dimpled in the middle and it, when you're trying to sort of uh, needle felt something on there it sort of starts to move down away from you and, and bits start to come up, come off as well so it's not going to last you that long but it's great um, for most starter kits and then this is a really similar sort of thing this was just a black one that I had and sometimes I use that for the lighter colour wool and that for the darker colour wool um, I've kept this because quite often uh, I don't use it for felting anymore but I keep a lot of my needles in it and it's nice and safe, nice and thick so they are handy and another thing I use them for is if I am felting and if I am say doing a leg I would use that to put between the legs because they are quite small and it can help support the leg as you're sort of trying to felt the other side so do keep them even though you might not use them that much um, but they are you know simple starter kit ones the next one I'm going to talk about is similar but bigger um, and this I, I find is a fantastic size look at it it's huge I think it's about 25 centimeters by 25 it's really thick it's off Amazon it's literally something like two pounds I think I'm going to try and do um, a link at the bottom to it on Amazon because it is it's just so great I bought a second one so I've got one already in case this all wears out but it's done quite well so far I use one side for darker colors and then the other side for lighter just to try and separate the two it's not too hard to clean um, for some people they will use sellotape you could hoover it or those little uh, clothe upholsterers they're really good you just wipe them over it so they're fantastic this one I really like because if you want to move somewhere else and go and sit in front of the TV it sits on your lap and it's really really big I mean that in front of the TV is not the greatest so this is really good and it's it's fairly noisy it's not too noisy it's noisy partner when you sit there going is that annoying dear sorry no but anyway so it's a really, really good one for not much money and I really recommend that. So moving up the scale, um, yeah, I'll go, to, I'll go to one of these. I made um, this when I saw somebody using it on one of the YouTube videos and it looked really, really good and I thought I'd try it out. So I made it, so I bought some of this. This is Hessian, I think, or it might be called Burlap in America, I'm not sure. And I just filled it with um, soft toy stuffing. So it's really soft, it's supportive, I put loads in. And I found it quite useful because it's quite thick so that I can do upright like that because the little ones, you know, they wouldn't support it, it wouldn't be big enough. But this was really, really good for doing awkward animals. Um, and again, light side, dark side, but it's starting to wear out because I've used it so much, I can just replace it, but I've, I've sort of, bought some other pads to try them out and see what they're like but that again it didn't cost me much to make really simple I even hand stitched that because the sewing machine wouldn't go through it so that's a really simple one very similar is I bought this one online and it's got um, two layers of hessian at the back so that's really good and then it's got like a linen on one side and it's got a zip and I stuffed it it came unstuffed so it's up to you what you want to stuff it with um, and it has been really good. Um, it was recommended to use buckwheat husks and the only problem with those is it's quite noisy. It's all right on that side's fine but if you're using this side it's really really noisy and the buckwheat husks are coming out so I think I'm probably going to take them out and just put some soft toy stuffing in it and I think that would work quite well. It, it wasn't too much money but yeah, again, nice idea with the two different sides and a nice set, very neatly presented. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is um, a brush type. Now, see a little, I've got loads of puppy husks everywhere. Now, uh, I thought this was going to be like plasticky light and not very sturdy, but it's 
really strong, it's solid, so that's really good. This, I believe, is more used for 2D felting, if you're doing a flat picture. Um, so you've got, this is a punch tool, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. It goes through it really nicely. There's no resistance from the brush, so that's fantastic. So I've seen a lot of uh, YouTubers do 2D felting on these. It's not the biggest, and I think you'd have to spend quite a bit of money to get a really, really big one. I did find that when I had um, a needle felted thing on it, it, it's very tricky for you to see, but it's pulling out quite a lot of fluff. The brush bit is quite resistant at the moment. Maybe as it wears down, that'll get a bit better. Um, but yeah, that's a very different one that I was keen to try and it's not my most favorite. But this one I'm gonna show you now. I ordered quite recently and I'm gonna do a shout out for the person who made it and I don't do these and she doesn't know that I'm doing this. This is beautiful. It's made out of felt so I was looking at making my own one which I'll talk about in a minute but I thought felt is the next best thing um, to making your own one out of wool and it's well padded it's only going to get harder the more you felt it it's got a light side it's got a dark side it's made by its Annie's hand felted creations absolutely beautiful little label she does classes apparently and all the people used to see hers at classes and say can I have one and so because she's a needle felter and she understands what, what we do and how it all works um, she started to design her own now when this came this cost me well I'll tell you in a minute I got a lovely little free gift of some wool I got a handwritten letter to me asking all about my felting um, I've got a lovely card so there's her card. She is um, www.handfelted.com. But however, at this is the small size, nine pounds. <sighs> really good price. So I shall see how it goes um, and I shall definitely be ordering a bigger one. So there you go, that's that one. The only other type of mat that I was gonna talk about is where you actually make it yourself and it's a bit of a project and it's a wet felting I believe I haven't I haven't done it I am thinking about it um, and you put all the walls together you mash them together a bit um, and then you wash it and you get a great big mat and it's all sort of felted together and then you can felt onto it and it won't sort of pull your wool and it's really really good so that's the only type other type of mat that I know about but that's mat briefly so budget two pounds slightly more nine pounds those are my favorite options right so we're on to needles because when you first get your starter kit or your first couple of needles you kind of haven't really got a clue what you're ordering so needles come first off in numbers they go from a 32 which is a bigger thicker needle all the way up to a 43. There might even be a 46, I've not seen it, but I believe that, that there is a 46 gauge. The G stands for gauge. And the, the higher the number, the finer the needle, or the finer the work it can do. Um, needles eventually, if you start to get quite a few, it's gonna be just trial and just see which ones suit you the best. So. For a starter kit, you would definitely be looking at a 36, a 38, you don't need it too fine. Um, if you're working with quite a lot of sort of a Shetland type wool or quite a coarse type wool, it's great sometimes to have a bigger, thicker needle just to get all that wool in together and to get it all matted up quicker. A fine needle would take a lot longer. So with needles, what a needle felting needle has got on it is basically barbs and those barbs, as you push the needle in, push the wool further in, and as you pull it out, there's no resistance. So it's when you push it in, it's doing all the work. And the work that is done is done with those barbs on the end. And you can see those barbs. I'm gonna show you a close up now, um, or a close up in a minute of a couple of needles. So once you've sorted out the numbers, so you're looking at 32 as a really bigger, thick needle, and anything up to sort of, four, they go in, seem to be evens, even though there is a 43 needle that I've seen, but mostly it's um, 32, 36, 38, 40, um, 
42 and then 46. Those are sort of roughly the sizes. Um, once you've worked out the sizes, you're going to be looking, starting at like 36, 38, like I said. You then look at the shape. Now, um, again, starter needles are normally triangular. That is basically the needle is in a triangular shape, okay, like that. Um, I'll show you a close up now of a triangular shape with the barbs on the end. So here's the triangular, it's quite easy to see, and the little notches are the barbs. So I think there's three barbs on each side there. Um, and so triangular is normally great for most things and that's probably what you'll start with. Then the next other shape you get is star shaped. I'll show you a star shaped now so you can have a look. Um, this one is the star and it's, it's star or cross. It's very tricky to see. There's slight sort of dents in the side um, and I think it's only got two barbs. And star shapes are again fairly good all-rounders but again, you're just gonna have to try them out and see what you think. And then you have spiral, and you spiral st sort of start to work with um, making your, making doing finer detail basically, and making it smoother. So um, the thing to bear in mind as well is a 32 needle is a lot thicker than a 40 needle, and the 40 needle is more likely to break. So you wouldn't want to use it in the start off when you start your needle felting project because you're going to be doing a lot of work with it. You want it sort of for the finer detail on the outside. So this is the spiral. As you can see, as I turn it, it spirals downwards. And then there's one other sort of type of needle is called a crown and it's not to do with the shape it's to do with I think the number of barbs on the end and the crown has got loads of barbs right down by the tip of the needle so that's really good when you're doing like really fine work on the surface and you're not sort of trying to get it all started at the beginning and all matted together so that um, sort of covers basic numbers and basic shapes you can also get a reverse needle which I didn't know about for a while and a reverse needle does exactly what it says is it goes in with no resistance and it comes out pulling the wool out so if you I sort of think of it is if you were merging colors you would pull some out and it would leave fluffy bits out on the top and then you sort of needle felt them back down again and it helps blend the colors or other people use reverse needles really great it's creating sort of wool or light wool or fluff on a teddy bear they sort of pull it out and leave it there so it looks like it's got a little bit of fluff without you having to put in individual bits of fluff you're just pulling it out with the needle um, what I like to do with my needles because you can get lots of holders quite often um, I just put tape around the end of mine because it just makes it a little bit bigger me um, I even have taped two together because I quite like these two needles for when I want just to speed things up um, in when I first started you can buy again this is kind of into tools but it's needles tools for needles you can buy um, handles like this or pens almost like this this one's got three needles at the end uh, I do find it doesn't needle felt as deep as I hoped it would now don't make a mistake they're really good so they're worth getting but my one doesn't undo I can't get it undone so I can't change those needles if they break so make sure you get one where you can undo it this handle I got this is lovely I really like this and you normally have three needles in it but I find it better with two but you can take them out they just store in there so that's how they hold and then when you're not using it which is great for traveling you can take them out and you can put them the other way around and put them back in and then they stay in and that's really really nifty because it's nice and safe I really like that it's a wooden handle it's fantastic and you can use one two or three needles so you've got that option you can get these with a lot more bigger needles in as well, which is really good if you're trying to do big pieces. And then the last sort of tool that I know about, this is a punch. And again, this is more for, let's say, 2D felting, when I was talking about doing it on the brush. Um, and it's got 10 needles in it. You can open it up, you can undo them, and you can lock it so that it doesn't go down all the time, so it's nice and safe. Children around. 
So I think that's most of what I wanted to talk about needles. Just to say, I find that the best thing you can do with needles is to order a sort of a starter kit of needles and they'll all be, if you choose one that's all colour coded at the top and then you get your colour code and then you can see what needles do what and then you can learn what needles you like using the most as well. And keep the colour codes, it's really important. I keep a lot of my needles in a thing like this or um, this one came all together. This is Heidi Feather, she's really good. Um, and they're all colour coded as well. So there we go. So if I've still got you all, the last little bit of the video is the various tools that you can have. I mean, needle farting is a really cheap thing to start. You need a needle and some wool and preferably a mat and that's it and away you go but there are tools that you can um, have that are not too expensive that can make your life just a little bit easier so the first thing i'm going to talk about so i the next video i'm doing is on wire armature because a lot of people go oh i haven't tried that yet i'm a bit scared about it it's not scary just try it just do it honestly it's really simple and i do it without loads of measurements most of the time um like this is all wire armature, wire armature. This one's not, you know, you don't have to. But anyway, so wire, this is a craft wire. It's one mil thick. You can get it to uh, 1.2 would be slightly better or 1.6 would be really quite strong. I sort of double this up because it's one and it makes, and I wind it round and do lots of things with it. So I find that really good. But along with that, to make your life easier, you're going to need a pair of wire cutters. You can do it with scissors, but you'll probably blunt your scissors after a while. So this wire cutter is fab. There's a little cutting bit in there. And these are flat nose pliers. And these help because when I do the leg, so I turn it like that, flat nose grabs hold of it and makes a nice tiny little end. Otherwise, it's really hard to do that and I like that being at the bottom of my legs because I don't like sharp um, bits of wire sticking out so I find that a lot better. So these, not much, you can buy little tool kits of these and with it, because um, I used to do jewellery before this and uh, these like bend over ends and so these are quite nice too but you get lots of little kits so they're great. Always useful to have a little pair of scissors. Tape measure is great. If you are selling your products in particular, you're going to need to sort of measure them and tell people how big they are. Glue, I use a basic glue. This does all plastics, but I use it for, for nearly everything. Tweezers, handy for pulling out little bits of straw or shavings stuck in the wool so you don't have to sort of go in with your fingers. Along with the wire, I do a, um, just make a piece of wire like that, which is really handy for doing legs on, and then you just you wrap it round, felt the legs, so it's nice and straight, and then slide it off. So that's the kind of thing I would have done all these legs with. So it keeps them nice and straight. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is a really simple one. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on animal faces and how to sort of get good faces, good ears, um, good eyes and nose. The ears, I do a lot of the time with this. I just take, these are two coasters. Um, get two bits of plastic or two bits of really thick card and I do the ears between them but it's handy to have these in your kit at all times um, and it doesn't matter what you make it from. Um, this one also this is a really important tool this is a it's an owl I think it's called an owl a tool owl AWL I will double check um, I might put a link to that one as well down below because it's really good it cost me about three pounds and this is for making eyes so you can make eyes with a needle and you just repeatedly stab 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 or you can get your scissors go like that and then stab that in and twist and twist and make the eye hole but this makes it so much easier. You put it in, drive it in, twisting it, and it just makes the holes perfect. And then when you've got your eye ready, so you leave it in, you get the eye, test it, and um, it just makes a perfect size hole. Also, when I do horns on the top, they've got wire running through them, and I do great big bits of wire. I dig this right down into the head so I can get the wire nice and deep and really secure and then I glue it all in. Honestly, this one, out of anything here, apart from the wire cutters, very useful. This is really, really handy. 
It comes with a little case because it's it's sort of sharp. It's not really sharp, but it's sort of sharp. The next thing I'm going to talk about is our our, our eyes. Um, I do use uh, plastic eyes. You can see these are titchy tiny eyes that I've put in there. You can. A lot of people use beads, or you can even needle felt the eye yourself, just with black wool, and then just put a little bit of white detail. So if you don't want to buy eyes, you can do it like that. But I like to put eyes in. I like to put a little bit of detail around the eyes as well and eyelids. So I bought loads of these online, probably a hundred for, I don't know, about eight pounds, not much. I bought this pack of eyes. This was another one. These are quite big, so hence I haven't used all the big ones. And they've got a bit of wire on the back, so they work really well. And then you can start to get, I'm just getting more detailed eyes. Um, I think it's going to look quite cool with some of my animals if I've got a bit of a colour around the outside. Um, you can see that's got a little bit of colour. Um, again, you can buy these off Etsy, off Amazon. As you get into sort of the coloured ones, you don't get as much for your money. But I'd say a really good size is sort of 4mm, 5mm. These ones, they come with these plastic backs that's more for if you're making soft toys. Um, that children might play with. They've got safety backs. Uh, our animals, or most of what you felt, is not for children. And then these are just great big eyes. So the eyes, they, they don't cost too much either if you're, if you're looking to do them. And I just find them really easy. I use the, the owl thing and make the hole, glue them in, and they stay. So they're fantastic. And then the last thing on tools is really optional. You probably won't need this, but these are... Um, they call them carders, but I think they're dog grooming um, pads. So basically they're two dog grooming pads. And you put the wool either side if you would like to mix your colors or if you'd like to card your own wool. And carding means roughing up and messing up your own wool. So say you buy a top or a roving, uh, which are quite difficult sometimes to get a really smooth effect. Because when you start really, carded wool is just the best. It's so much easier. I do a whole video on wools to try and explain it all to you because I didn't understand wools in the beginning but this you can card your wool if you've got wool and it's um, you're not being able to use it so these are I think they were they weren't cheap they were a good 14 15 16 pounds so you might not need them but they're useful I do use them every now and again so that's most of tools um, like I said my next video is going to be out is going to be on wire armature then I'm going to be doing facial features for animals so talking all through that and then the one after that is going to be all on hooves um, paws and uh, little uh, claws and feet and how you would do that so thanks for watching please subscribe because if you subscribe I can carry on making videos and please like if you like the video as well take care felters happy felting